Okay, I, th I think we can start. Thanks, Sean. <laughs> so, hi, uh, good afternoon, everyone. So, welcome to Block Hash Live 2020 session consensus and the consortia know house with uh, Mr. Arun SM. So, uh, I just wanted to let you know that this session is being recorded. Uh, also, uh, this session is conducted in collaboration with High Pledge of Kerala and Kochi communities. Uh, so, I, I want to welcome our speaker today. Uh, many of you might already know him. Uh, for those who don't know him, uh, Mr. Arun SM, he's a senior software engineer, uh, blockchain platforms at uh, Walmart Labs. Uh, that is his uh, day job, uh, but he's a man who wears many hats. Uh, he's a Hyperledger TAC member uh, and co-lead of Hyperledger India chapter. He's a maintainer of, uh, of the Hyperledger Sawtooth project. He's also a co-organizer of Hyperledger Bangalore meetup group, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, so we are very happy to have him for this session. Uh, so I would like to welcome Arun on behalf of everyone here today. Uh, over to you, Arun. Thanks, Sean. In, hello, everyone. Good afternoon. So um, yeah, I would like to keep myself. It's simple. You could call me a room. And then uh, thanks for that quick introduction. I skipped this part then. So I'll quickly brief about what is going to be covered in today's session. Right. So I kept the uh, uh, slides to be more simple to understand. And if required, we'll go in deep to understand what each of them mean. And feel free to uh, not notify me. Uh, Right, any point in time, we'll then debate over those slides or those concepts, and then understand how things work in much deeper. Um, so yeah, this content was prepared for to help both beginners as well as to those who already understand what consensus is to think differently when they design their application systems. So um, this is how we structure uh, for the next 30 minutes. We'll understand what consensus is and why does it matter for blockchain and we'll also understand what does consortium really mean and do we really need cons consensus in consortium and how is it handled and then we'll go on debating on few of the points which we which we may come across when we design a blockchain solution right? to understand is consensus algorithm really playing a role in making a decision or not. So I'll leave with some open questions for you to go back and debate on those things. Um, so first, what is consensus? What, what does consensus algorithm really mean? So what do we um, understand by consensus, right? So in, in practical, in reality, we may see these kind of issues everywhere. Whenever there is a, whenever there is a group, whenever there are um, a set of organizations or in, for any quorum for that matter, right? A small group of people, if they want to agree upon a particular topic, they follow some process. They, they all agree, uh, they all start debating for and against a topic and then they agree upon it. Or there could also be a process for agreeing upon a particular topic. For example, in our parliament elections, they, we, we do send our elected representatives and then they go and debate in the parliament and make laws, uh, which again, we will follow, right? So that's a, that's a process which they follow. And similarly, in, in any uh, distributed systems, when we think, think about a distributed system, we need those machines to agree upon some data point. We, we want those machines to know what other machine is talking about. And that's where the consensus algorithm really play a role. And where do we see consensus algorithms in reality? You will find this. In fact, you you are using this even now to be on this call, right? To provide high availability, high availability of uh, the streaming service. Maybe the streaming service provider is using consensus algorithm behind the scenes, running on their set of master nodes. And it's also being used in Kubernetes, which is widely used deployment uh, platform. And then it's also used in, let's say, your cloud RDBMS database systems. It's used in uh, clock synchronization. It's used in load balancers. It's actually used everywhere. It's not something which is new only for blockchain. 
but this is some this is a concept which is there in place for a while now and what does consensus really mean in terms of distributed systems what it means is we want our system to be available and we want our system to continue as expected even if there are some failures let's look at what the failures really mean which i was talking about right so in terms of availability as i said it's used in kubernetes it's used in load balancers so consensus algorithms are are widely adopted and why do we use it in kubernetes we have set of master nodes so these are the nodes which decide where a particular workload is going to be deployed on and now when we have multiple people with equal powers they all want to compete with each other and then they all may end up with different decisions and how do we know which decision to abide by that's where uh, kubernetes follows hcd uh, raft as one of the consensus right so in 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 simple terms what we what we need to understand about a consensus is that we want our system to be available all the time and when we say our system is available all the time could be um, we are really talking in in these true uh, broader terminologies we are talking in terms of a particular node crashing or going down randomly because of some reason which we don't know and then other reason could be that we are really talking about a bad behavior in the network um, it could be that a um, particular machine is not able to handle particular floating point numbers so it's not really intended errors which we expect in our result or it could be as as vague as a particular node is really malicious and then they are trying to uh, come up with a wrong response as they i mean in, in the consortia or, or in the network so um what we need to understand we we can classify these consensus processes into two categories one which we can put them under crash fault tolerance systems so these are the algorithms or mechanisms which provides the solution to the first problem the availability problem as long as we have uh, de depending on which algorithm we follow as long as we have specified number of uh, nodes up and running we have our system available all the time and when we talk about bft byzantine fault tolerance by the way that term byzantine comes from one of the um, greek so it's it, it's really interesting algorithm it it takes its own separate time to discuss what that byzantine uh, general problem is i would suggest you to go and research more about it and within that byzantine fault tolerance it could be intentional or unintentional behavior of an involved party it's, so now that we understand what consensus is a quick recap of what blockchain is right to understand how why are we even talking about consensus in a blockchain conference right so what is blockchain blockchain i would put in it i would put it in these three words it's a distributed system it's a decentralized system it provides us immutable ledger of records so at its core any blockchain would some way or other it provides these capabilities for us and in addition of course there are uh, things such as smart contracts which will help us in verifying if all the uh, if if a, if a certain rule which is set initially they are met properly by all the participants when they send transactions so i would not categorize i mean i did not catch them up in the slide rather i just put them in this flow in this flow which you see on the screen so um in Hello, Arun. Use this as a legal proof, and we can also stop some malicious behaviors if required behind uh, beforehand. So these are the things which we generally do. As in multiple blockchain platforms, they enable these capabilities through different means. Right? Um, Ethereum could do it differently when compared to Hyperledger Fabric, and Sawtooth can do it differently from Bezos. 
each of them have their own mechanism of handling this or getting this done. Now that we know what blockchain is, and let's try to see what is consensus in blockchain really mean. So this, I know this has been a debated question for at least the beginners of blockchain uh, technology, who think that consensus is. I mean, you might all have already been heard about mining in Bitcoin, or mining in some other ecosystems like um, Ethereum. Right? So, um, what is what is consensus in blockchain really I mean? Is it just the mining? So, if you see the slide, I put that crossbar on the miner person. Um, so, it's that's supposed to be taken as it's not only mining uh, through which we can achieve consensus in a network. So mining is in fact one of the way of achieving consensus. But when we think about enterprise blockchain applications, we really don't consider mining as one of the things. Right? So what do we achieve with consensus in any blockchain network? We achieve uh, in, in any blockchain network, we want those features, those capabilities, which we just discussed in the previous slide to be enabled. And uh, mechanism through which we, we provide those features or things are, is by creating the blocks. So where is consensus really involved in a blockchain? So in this slide, I'm giving you an impression that a consensus process is involved to create the block and to commit that block. Okay. Um, so we'll, we'll, we'll come across a few examples of how the creation and committing works across different blockchain networks and what options do we really have. But in at, at a broad level, what we need is we need one person responsible in the network who can take, who everybody in the network agrees upon to create a block and block has list of all the transactions. It has list of transactions which everybody agrees upon. That's a way of getting consensus. So let's say a client sends a transaction and then a node receives it and then they are they don't know if the transaction is successful or it um, should be accepted what do we do with that so that's where a smart contract would run and then there is this whole process of consensus algorithm which runs and it determines whether the transaction is valid or not should it be considered as done or not so everybody so that everybody in the network they are on the same page um yeah, let me move quickly to next page. So in coming slides, I'm going to discuss quickly about two uh, broad, cat two other categories of consensus, achieving consensus. So earlier we saw that we could classify consensus as CFT and BFT, crash and Byzantine fault tolerance systems. Over here, I'm now going to discuss them a little different, um, in, in a little different manner. Uh, and Nakamoto style consensus algorithms and I can categorize the others uh, section as false finality based consensus algorithm. So what does Nakamoto style consensus algorithm really mean? So these are the systems which are proof based, right? So if any person in the network wants to create a block or wants to say that this particular transaction is valid, everybody should consider this transaction at this point in time. If you see, uh, I mean, if you see a blockchain network, we really talk about blocks and we also talk about position of the transaction in a chain, right? We, so um, we, we need to know not exactly, we, we not exactly not only create a block, but we also put that particular transaction in one particular block in our chain. So that's a guarantee that anybody with that particular block with them they agree to that transaction. It's not that, uh, that they skip that block. So one person can have the transaction in block one, other person can have that same transaction in block two. No, that is not how a consensus is achieved because every transaction could change the state of the system underneath. And um, blockchain is of course a stateful set um, applications. Like So um, within Nakamoto style, as I said, it involves some kind of proof to be produced so that they claim to be owners. And it's kind of passive consensus or it's, I would put this as eventual consistency, which is achieved through Nakamoto style algorithms. 
what that means is there is a possibility that initially even though a transaction is accepted maybe that's that's the only node in the network which thinks that a transaction is successful maybe everybody else they also think the same way with other transactions and only when this subset these two different subsets they talk to each other they come to know okay so other person did a better work than me so the other person deserves to be a creator of the block so that's why the proof is proof is required and coming across different proofs there are proof of work proof of stake proof of elapsed time and there are again a number of variants of of it right including proof of storage proof of um, so there are even algorithms which would show hey this is how much compute power i have kind of consensus algorithms so key things to take away are been highlighted on the right side such as these kind of algorithms are susceptible to 51% attack like if you are a majority holder in the network then you get hold on to the network completely these generally also come with some uh, some limitations because of its eventual consistency in us it is possible that the throughput or expected uh, uh, number of transactions may not be agreed upon as quickly as we want them to be agreed upon and the other category i was talking about is, can be categorized or put them under fast finality algorithms and what does this mean this means we want a immediate result on a particular block we want to know if a block is accepted by everybody or not immediately right away at that moment in time and um, again there are multiple algorithms in this section i just highlighted two of them for a quick reference um so like for example in pbft there are it it follows a step by step approach where at each step for example it starts with pre prepare prepare and then um, commit and, and those transitions and then there are views involved so what that means is let's say um, let's say you have a time slotted um, work hours right so a node imagine that node is a worker and node has time slots and let's say a node wants to work in a node members agree for it then yes that particular node becomes leader for that view that that term you could consider it and um, in that term again it's not that the node which is which has won the election has complete authority it could be implemented in a way that even though the proposer is sending transactions which are to be added to the block others in the network they do have a say whether to agree for that transaction or not to agree so that's how the malicious behavior can be caught right and that there there is a requirement that we need at least two thirds of the network to be up in pbft consensus and of course raft is a known, well known algorithm which is also used in multiple other distributed systems as i said in initial slide like initial slides and now that we understand um algorithm consensus algorithms in some extent to some extent let's understand what consortium is so um so this is the definition which we can find on the internet but like what consortium means is really a group of members trying to do something to achieve a known result why does it matter for a blockchain project or blockchain solution so when we think about blockchain we are talking about multiple organizations coming together and helping to build something which will help each of those organizations indeed and when we have multiple organizations there will be multiple things to be uh, there will be multiple things which need which are needed to be taken care such as those organization need a legal framework around uh, when to call for a transaction or not or if they just need a governance structure right to know who else they should agree upon to join that network of those initial nodes 
they also they may also request for a way to know um, what kind of transactions that can be submitted. terms um, but they may not necessarily go hand in hand for example we may have a nakamoto style consensus algorithm which provides both cft and vft behavior and there are first finality based consensus algorithms one of them could provide cft other could provide vft right for example raf provides crash fault tolerance and then pbft provides bft behavior how do we choose what's the right balance between these and is isn't there a solution which maps to most of the needs hey i need i don't i want to catch malicious behaviors in my network i want to stop my system from crashing i want to, is is there a balance between that so um unfortunately the answer for this question is not as straightforward as we can come up with a problem statement but rather um Let's try to understand a different approach to consensus. I would bring up a, a topic from Hyperledger Fabric to discuss this this um, this phenomena. So it may not often be that we I mean we follow one of the consensus which which is available over there, or we come up with our own consensus approach, and we decide how to create a block in a blockchain network. No, it may not always be that case. For example, in Hyperledger Fabric, the consensus is a multi multi stage process, right? Where a client sends a transaction, gets all the endorsements, and then those endorsements are then sent to ordering service. The ordering service has responsibility of ordering them, and the endorsing organization and ordering organization they may not be the same. And you can have any kind of consensus running. On the ordering service clusters, their responsibility is to know which transaction will go into which block, and depending on uh, the endorsements which they have received. So, um, if you really see where exactly do we use Raft and Fabric, we are using them at we, we are using that algorithm at the ordering service layer. Does it mean that um, it's that's that's the only place where the consensus is being achieved in a blockchain? No, because as I said, the actual parties are getting into agreement through their endorsements to the transaction that happens much before a transaction is sent to ordering service cluster. So um, when we decide upon, when we go for enterprise applications, we may end up seeing much more complicated, much more multi-stage consensus approaches. It may not be just straight as straightforward as we initially discussed in concepts. Having discussed a particular scenario from Hyperledger Fabric, what other things are available within Hyperledger Umbrella? So different projects, in fact, have different algorithm supports. You can find Poet, Raft, PBFT, RBFT, Amir BFT, and of course, so many of these frameworks within Hyperledger Umbrella, they do provide option wherein which you can go and create your own new consensus algorithms. They, they provide pluggable interfaces. You define the process. You define when should a block be accepted by everyone. You define what should be done when a block is accepted. You define when should a transaction has to be accepted. So they provide interfaces for you and you can implement your own algorithm through those interface, exposed interfaces as well. So, um, having, dealt with these things now how do we what kind of questions do we really need to answer when we need to choose consensus or does it even matter when we go for a consortium work yes it does um, as long as we answer these following questions or maybe the questions i put up here are more simplified and depending on the use case you may have some additional questions in to these but you will need to uh, look it into look look into multiple aspects. Right? You need to check 
hey, is this particular consensus approach providing me privacy, which is expected by, let's say, uh, this particular law requirement, uh, the, the um, California um, Act, or maybe the European Privacy Act, or maybe Indian Privacy Act, which has been defined. Can I uh, adjust, I mean, can I approve or can I pass through that legal process with this approach? Can I, and what will be size of my network? If the size is big, then the fast finality algorithms, they may take a toll on, on the network, right? Reason is again being um, in a larger network in fast finality based algorithms, we generally tend to have a fully connected network. And as we know, number of connections in the network, it grows exponentially. Um, so that's, that's another reason, which another thing which we need to be wary about uh, the size of the network and the choice of consensus. But if we go for multi-stage consensus approaches, again, yes, it provides us some flexibility over there um, in the sense that I can choose a part of like only in, in case of Fabry, a, 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 only the participants in the channel, they get involved in the endorsing policy process. And when it comes to ordering service, I can choose with latest release of fabric i can choose part of ordering service cluster nodes which have responsibility of creating the block so those kind of features are available and another question which may we need to uh, discuss more in deeper before we make a choice is of course the degree of decentralization do i want complete decentralization where every party has equal right to do what they want to do in the network or is the model where somebody else ordering the transaction or as long as I endorse the transaction, which is supposed to go in there, it is fine with me. Is that kind of thing sufficient? And um, also it's like the speed of execution, all those factors do come in in that. And, and, and finally, like the performance and throughput factor, right? Um, so some of these consensus algorithm, they may sometimes get limited because of just the sheer number of messages exchanged in the network. And uh, nodes, they tend to limit themselves at maybe because of network limitations, maybe their compute resource limitations. That's another thing which we may need to choose, uh, think about before we make a choice. Um, we have last two minutes. I'll want to ask, is it fine to extend or do I need to end in next two minutes? Um, I think if you have time, uh, then we can extend it for uh, how, how much long do you think? Okay, I'll, I'll probably skip the. I wanted to briefly talk about the smart contract and then the deterministic nature which we expect in the smart contracts. So that yeah, yeah, sure, sure. We, we, I think we can extend. Okay, so um, quickly I'll, I'll brief that up, right? Um, instead of spending more time on it. So um, another thing which plays very critical role and achieving consensus or maybe avoiding. So most of these consensus algorithm, they may not be uh, uh, like uh, coming out of the box, providing solution to each of the problems. So far I have been discussing the problems with distributed networks, which are more towards agreeing upon something kind of questions, right? But there are other questions such as, uh, how do I solve the network security related aspects in my network? Is consensus really related to that? Do I need to worry? Uh, con uh, I mean, about my security when it when I make a decision of consensus algorithm. Those are the other questions which would also come up. So uh, there is there are possibility of denial of service attacks in uh, in consensus algorithms which are like, for example, PBFT is susceptible to that. So, so one way, I mean, there are mechanisms again through which we can limit those kind of attacks. So make sure that you're, um, I mean, these are the simple checks, right? So I'll quickly talk about the smart contracts and this, and the need for determinism in the smart contract. Your smart, as long as you keep your smart contracts deterministic in nature, as long as you know that what is the expected outcome from your smart contract, no matter when it is executed or what time in, in it is executed, you should get the same result so that rules out that no node is giving you intentionally, I mean, no, yeah, the wrong result, right? And then there are mechanisms through which you can store the complete smart contract on chain 
and you can have the governing related settings or governing related um, network governance related operations to be performed through on-chain operations which means you are getting all the features which blockchain provide the immutability the uh, decentralization the distributed behavior for managing the network itself so, um, and since because of limitation in the time i'll probably go to I'll, I'll probably stop that discussion at that point and so that's that's how we that the, these are the kind of questions which come to us when we need to decide upon on a consensus algorithm and thank you for your time today. I'm not sure if we have time for Q&A. Yeah. yeah, we can. We can have questions. I'll open up for uh, questions from audience. Uh, if you can, uh, either you can uh, put in the chat or you can unmute yourself and ask the question. Okay, let me ask one question myself. Uh, so I don't. Uh, so I, I I want to ask about the consortium concept of uh, how uh, quest. Oh, okay, so I think we have already have a question. What is fifty one attack? Uh, right. So um, let's let's consider a network where you have a a proof of work. Uh, let's say you have an Okamoto style consensus algorithm, right? Where, as I said, they really work in a phase where they, they do eventual consistency as part of their agreement process. What that means is, let's say if you have 10 nodes in the network and you come up with a block or you come up with a particular order of transactions and then you say, hey, this is the order in which transactions are to be accepted. What if, remaining participants on your network they don't agree upon then it's just that you are thinking the, order, the transaction should be ordered in particular manner but remaining parties in the in the in the consortium they don't think it that way so with 51 percent um, um, participants on the network agreeing upon your block or be agreeing upon your ordering sequence of ordering you can be very sure that majority of the nodes in the network, they agreed for you. So that leaves behind the small portion, which is minority to also follow up with the majority. So 51% attack means you falsifying uh, node identity by yourself, or it's also called civil attack. It's, it's also one of those, uh, it also falls under that category, right? So you falsifying identities and then you claiming to be having more number of nodes in a network and then you voting for yourself. So that's like you have control of majority of the network and then you are saying, hey, you are producing the block in that majority. So that's why it should be accepted by everyone. That's what the 51% attack means. So we have another question. Uh, first, where does, I mean, uh, whether sure. fast finality comes under CFT or PFT? Sure. So fast finality can be achieved. Uh, so as I said, these, these so they don't go hand in hand. Right in one of the slides, I showed you the four directions. Uh, so they not necessarily go hand in hand. Uh, for example, Raft provides CFT behavior, whereas PBFT provides uh, a BFT behavior in, in in your network, and they both are fast finality based algorithms. So why is Raft only CFT? Because once a leader is elected, then that leader stays on to be the leader for as long as the majority of the nodes in the network agree for that leader, uh, agree for that the leader is up and running fine. These are the CFT algorithms majorly, they are used for high availability systems in cases where you want uh, your network to be always up, the load balancers, right? And they they run a cluster within themselves to know which service is available. 
even if one node goes down, then the other nodes takes that responsibility of identifying where to redirect the request to. Um, in Kubernetes, as I said, the master nodes, they run the raft again. So that is used to determine which node should get the uh, submitted workloads to run. And also it does many other things. I'm just oversimplifying the th things which master node does in Kubernetes. Currently, is there an implementation for BFT in Hyperledger Fabric? So I may not know the latest state on that, but there were talks on providing BFT behavior, um, if not directly through PBFT kind. So as I said, in Fabric, the consensus process is a multi-stage process, right? It's not straightforward as you go and say, hey, I want this algorithm or that, um, I want other. It's not that how Fabric works you need endorsements from uh, participating organizations and those endorsements are sent to ordering service for ordering the transactions. So it's a multi-stage process. You're, you are in fact getting agreement from all the participants beforehand um, and then going to ordering service. So ordering service at max can only put them one after other. And again, over there, there are possibilities of providing BFT behavior may if may not be through uh, PBFT, which is not, I'm not sure if it is already implemented or not available, sorry for that. But there are projects within Hyperledger Labs, which work towards providing BFT behavior in Fabric. You may look into a private chain code project that's in Hyperledger Labs that provides that behavior. How can identity, uh, how can we identify the false identity in the network? So that's a good question, right? So multiple blockchain networks, they provide multiple ways of identifying if identity is not belonging to them. If you think of, it, it's the same concept of CAs. Let's go back in time and understand how CA works, right? So what is CA? CA, um, I mean, I'm, I'm talking with respect to fabric, of course. I can, I'll then give you an, another example on uh, Sautut as well. So, uh, uh, Fabric follows the identities and those identities are permissioned in the sense you can configure your network to know, I mean, tell the network, hey, if a person comes to you and submits a transaction or if a new node comes and joins your network, you should accept them only if they have this uh, certificate issued by this party. So uh, the delegation of proof goes to the CA. As long as your identity is issued by the CA uh, and then your network is configured to accept uh, your C, I mean, to trust your CA, that's how the trust is achieved in Fabric. Whereas in Sawtooth, they go by a pure model of public key cryptography. You have your private key, which is your private information then you have a public key associated with it. You permission yourself in the network such that you put all the public keys on chain, you store your public keys on the blockchain network and you tell, hey, here are the public keys. If somebody signs a transaction, signing involves, of course, using your private key and it tells who signed or who submitted the transaction. Then you are telling the network, hey, if somebody signs the transaction using I mean, and you can verify the signature using these public keys, then they are the valid people to be in the network. Again, you can do a validator level permissioning, you can do transaction level permissioning, you can do smart contract level permissioning. Within the smart contract, you can do again check by yourself if a public key is what you expect for from the sender. So this is how um, we can identify false identity in the network. I think I may have used a wrong word when I spoke about Sybil attack. So Sybil attack is not necessarily always with this false identity. Sybil attack could also be with multiple identities which are valid, which everybody trusts in the network. Multiple identities, but they, behind the scene, they all belong to the same group of people or same person. Um, I think there is a, one more question. Can we receive documentation in this context, BFT? So yes, sure. So I'll do one thing. I'll share across this documentation. I guess the video recording will also be placed uh, on some 
raised maybe yeah, yeah. on youtube uh, i think we can uh, share it on the meetup groups uh, as well as on the uh, kba uh, forums sure sure i'll i'll send you the slide deck okay these are good questions by the way so uh, i i don't think uh, we might we we'll have any more questions uh, so does anyone have any questions uh, so i just want to ask one question uh, sure. it's not really a technical one maybe a philosophical one uh, if you if you want to answer uh, so the consortium concept uh, so so uh, unlike a uh, public network uh, where you have rules but doesn't really have a governance layer or let's call it a consensus a social consensus layer below it similar to a consortium uh, so does does a consortium have kind of uh, similar problems when it comes to scale uh, similar to uh, the consensus and uh, the actual consensus algorithms maybe not similar ones but uh something different like uh, you have consortium which scales up to maybe 100 uh, people or 100 members uh and uh, oh, it's a interesting question the reason i would say that is because when we say consortium is growing the group of organizations coming together and building out building a solution is growing it may not necessarily translate to a physical infrastructure of compute resources growing in the same ratio it could still be that we still have a limited number of participants willing to physically uh, lend their compute resources be part Uh, burning question as such uh, at, at least at the one which i haven't come across in any use case or any examples which uh, so oh, just one, one thing like um, I, so i i was asking specifically because you are in uh, hyperledger tac and uh, so mm -hmm. i it, the more question was more really about uh, coming to some consensus on the decision like on the governance layer. like because consortiums mostly deal with uh, i mean other than the infrastructure part or the technical part you have to deal with uh, a lot of things that people have to agree on right uh, so uh, does does that have any problem when it comes to scale uh, have you come across uh, i mean if you are asking the tsc decision not not specifically tsc but i was just asking like does consortiums have that kind of a problem when you, when you want to scale it to more people or not more people but more organized people. okay um so, so generally i have seen consortiums where they form a group of so there will be like uh, for example i'll i'll take hyperledger itself as one of the thing right so within hyperledger they have a governing board where participants from different organizations they come together and then they run the organization Um, or or that they run the hyperledger project um so again there are places within that governing board which will be elected via a election process so uh, the core set of group or this governing board with if you consider hyperledger itself as one big consortium which involves so many organizations that a uh, core part of people they make decisions on behalf of the rest of them because they get elected to be in that in in that core set of groups so you could i mean you could consider similar things happening in a uh, application or a solution space use cases as well when even though consortium keeps growing there would be a part of organizations through some mechanism they uh, tend to represent the bigger forum and uh, this, the decisions will be made through them and that should still be um, handled in in the same fashion as 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 it used to earlier okay so so uh, basically you build layers as you uh, grow the uh, yes okay okay uh 
question we have one question uh, what should be the size of ordering service cluster in hyperledger fabric uh, i don't know if you are so sure i think i will not speak um, only for fabric but I'll, i'll speak generally for raft i think for now the majority adoption of fabric is happening on raft as a consensus algorithm for ordering service cluster and for raft to work as it it requires at least three nodes to be present in the uh, network but the more the net, uh, i mean more the participants the better it is have at least three having at least three is more susceptible to uh, the failure attacks where even if one node goes down then you fall short of the quorum who can vote and get a new leader in the network so having four is ideal in in that case because even if one node goes down you still have three people and out of four to elect a leader you still need three votes right and um so that's a possibility you still tend to get a leader but anything greater than that is what is a, a good behavior or good network configuration but again we need to keep an eye on the total size of ordering service cluster because if we grow it to a larger size um, like more than 10 or 15 then there is possibility of because of that in uh, the connection from each node to each other node which is a fully connected network it tends to be more slower Um, what can we use the concept of consensus within an organization between departments? Or can you explain your question more, Jinsha? For example, uh, sir, if you are considering a college, and I, if I am doing some blockchain uh, network inside the college, can we do any consensus between the departments? like that that is what i am asking sure so i mean if departments are competing to do something with each other like for example each department has a choice of who gets to represent the college in in some event then they can run a consensus and get to choose a leader i am not able to correlate which use exact use case i can give with respect to this college and department scenario but you would require consensus when you have multiple parties and when they all try to do something or in you consider multiple parties having equal powers to do something you need them to agree upon one common thing one common thing you could say hey let's do a um, meet up or let's say let's do a hackathon and everybody comes up with their own names but you need a consensus on one particular name to be chosen for the event so you could ask all the departments to come up with one name and then vote for each other whichever gets the highest vote that could be a consensus of of and that would be a way of get achieving consensus i am not able to think of any other use case for college departments so okay thank you sir come uh, so i th- i think we can uh, have a stop here so we are over time uh, but uh, for good reason uh, uh, so I, i i guess we can stop here uh, so i just want to thank arun uh, for this wonderful session so it was very informative and uh, comprehensive based on the questions uh, i can see and uh, do you want to say something arun no i wanted to ask if recording is going to stop can you see that oh it's i see that session is still getting recorded yeah 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 session is still getting recorded uh, so thank you thank you everyone for joining and uh, i just want to give a special thanks to arun uh, for taking his time on the middle of the day of the work day of the work day uh, to come and speak with us uh, thank you arun thank you it was my pleasure to speak here thank you all uh, and uh, so Yeah, let me just stop the recording.